Hi everyone, Marisa Stone here with Simon Says Social and the Systems Lounge. And I wanna welcome you today to the 2018 Premier International Women's Business Systems Virtual Summit, where you get to learn all about the systems that our speakers are using to get things done. And today I am super, super excited to have Gail Wilson Garitano. Did I pronounce that correctly? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Here to talk with us all about how to sell the solution, not the service. And this is, this is one of those topics that is near and dear to my heart because I cannot tell you how many times I've had this conversation with my own clients. So I'm super excited to dive in. But let me tell you a little bit about Gail before we get started. Something that you may not know, Gail is a 2017 TEDx Charlotte speaker. I've totally got to pick your brain about that. <laughs> And she's the executive director and VP of City Year in Columbia. City Year partners with public schools in high needs communities across the United States and international affiliates to bridge this gap inside high poverty communities between the support that the systems actually, that the students actually need and the school, um, the resources that these schools actually have to give. And, um, and are designed to provide. And so she really does a lot of stuff in the nonprofit sector. In addition to this nonprofit work, Gail is the owner of Anchor Shred and Recycle. Um, and I love this because, you know, how many of us really spend our time to learn more about recycling, but we really aren't quite sure exactly how to do this? Gail is your go-to person. Um, she holds a BA in education, an MS in leadership and policy, and just in case that's not enough, a PhD in applied management and decision sciences. Wow! <laughs> she is a 2004 Schlott Foundation Fellow, and her original one-woman show, It's Cloudy in the West, was based on a family history circa 1890, and it toured extensively. Gail has also published two books for the History Press, Drink Small, The Life of Music of South Carolina's Blues Doctor, and Carolina Bluegrass, A Lonesome History, both of which sound absolutely amazing. Her latest project, A Tower of Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, is a collection of existentialist whimsy, and I am so excited to learn more about that. Gail, welcome to the summit. It's exciting to have you here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be here. Yay! So let's just kind of begin at the beginning. What are we talking about when we say sell the solution, not the service? So my service, so we're focusing now on my small business, my recycle collection business. Okay. Um, so certainly my service is I collect recycle materials. Right. That's simple, right? Right. But, you know, I'm not the only one that does that, that can right. provide that service. If somebody is looking for recycle collector, they're going to find me and a few other folks, right? right? So if I go in and my, and my first thing is about selling my service, then I'm almost already putting myself on the defensive, right? Because I'm trying to convince them why me as opposed to A, B, or C. Right. All right. So then I'm, I'm really going in and I've got to like convince them, choose me, my price, my whatever. But if I'm selling the solution, then what, the, what, it, what really is that they're looking for is, or what they're asking or saying, what they're really saying is, we want to be more environmentally responsible. Right. Okay. Right. If I go in, Helping them find out, yes, recycle collecting is a part of that, mm -hmm. but what they really want is to be more environmentally responsible in their workplace. That allows me to go in in a completely different way. I'm immediately going in as their partner, right. not a vendor. Right? Right. And I can also see more ways in which I can enhance that experience for them. Yes, I'm still doing the same thing that A, B, and C is doing, mm -hmm. but I'm coming in to partner with them on their bigger, their, their, their greater need, which is how can we do this? Yeah, and I love that. It's really a, it's really a switch in perception mm -hmm. of the end user, right? It's, the, right? it's this idea that you're coming in with a solution to their problem, not one more line item on their budget. <laughs> That's right. That is right, especially in a service like mine, you know, and in our state where you don't have to recycle. Like, this is for really asking them to spend when, you know, they don't have to. 
Right, right, exactly. Okay, so let's apply this to entrepreneurship. Okay. Why should entrepreneurs be concerned with this idea of selling the solution and not the service? Well, I think there's a, there's a couple of reasons. Um, for me, personally, it's allowed me to find um, other ways to support that client. Yeah. Right? Besides just, so let me be very concrete. So when I was first um, sort of doing a, an analysis and sort of considering my business and was visiting folks that were already doing recycling, the first thing I noticed was that I walked in, um, so I'm shred and recycle. We do document shredding as well. Mm -hmm. I walk into a company or a small business that wants to do it. They're already indicating they want to do it. So I mean, this is not a hard sell. Okay? Right. So, but the first thing I see is in the break room, right? There's all the, the bottles, the cans, and the aluminum set up, right? Yeah. Then I look over to the other side, right? And then I see under somebody's desk or next to the copy machine is the little document shredding, right? right? And then when I'm out back, you know, moving my truck, I see they've got a cardboard dumpster. Mm -hmm. So think about that. That's three different vendors. Yeah. Right? Because the recycle people don't do document shredding. Right. And nobody does the cardboard. Yeah. So if I really want to be a solution for them and a true value add, then my business model was I can do it all. Yeah. Right. But first I had to find out, okay, why is somebody not already doing that? And there were lots of challenge and real reasons for that. But if I can solve that right. and come and say, look, you're already paying this person, you're paying this person, plus I know you want to be environmentally sensitive, so right. you really don't want three different trucks right. coming here, right? The carbon footprint, right? So again, right. really, it's like, really, like you said, yeah. um, just sort of reframing how I'm showing up. Yeah. And I really like that too, because, you know, what I'm hearing you say is that you're starting by listening and paying mm -hmm. attention and, and being observant and looking around and noticing what people are already doing and figuring out a better way to put all that together. And I love that, you know? I think um, that's really key what you just said, because I think, um, speaking for myself, you know, we're, I just want to get in and my focus is just get in, get them to sign on the line, get in, get out. And, and we miss so many opportunities by not looking around. Yes, yes. Yeah, because you learn so much about what your clients need if you just pause. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just that's, a, that's a big one. <laughs> but who has time to do that? Who has right? time? Like, Anybody got time almost, for that? <laughs> but we almost don't have time. As entrepreneurs, we, we don't have time not to pause. Exactly. I agree with that. So one of the things that you tell your clients is that value equals solutions. Hmm. Can you talk to us for a moment about what this means? So. There's what you spend money on, but not everything you spend money on has great value. Right. right. Where does the client, where does the customer put their value? You can spend money on something and almost regret it or resent, resent that you're doing it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. We got to pay for this, but there really has no value. So it's, it's almost what you were, were saying before. And as we were talking about this partnership, you value what is important, mm -hmm. right? So how do I make, um, my, the, the solution is what's important to them. So how do I put emphasis on that? I want to be a value add, right. not just somebody else that shows up and then they've got to like take time away from doing X, Y, or Z, or we show up at their busiest time and we want to talk. That's, there's no value in that. Right. Okay? right. So again, it, it's understanding the flow of their business. What can I bring um, that makes it more personally what at first what do they want out of it mm -hmm. right? it's like you know when when you give a gift it's only a gift if it's something the person wants <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay so what is it that they that they really really want some folks um do want you to come in go out don't bother me the check is over there do what you do right. others you know they want you to check in mm -hmm. um so knowing those pieces as well yeah. so that i can be a value because when it comes time to cut or reduce they tend to, the things that have value are the things that, you know what, right. we like anchor, let's keep them and let's look someplace else. Yes, yes. And I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Again, you know, you're going back to being observant, you're going back to listening, you're going back to paying attention to what your client holds as value. And by understanding what that is, you're providing that. And I, I absolutely love that entire 
like idea and concept. I think it's super important. I think when you um, were communicating us about, you know, participating in this summit, you made it very clear also that there needs to be value yes. right, for the people that are participating. Yeah. Um, and, and I heard that very clearly because when, the way I interpreted that, yeah, was that people are taking their time. Yes. Right? They are investing their time. And as we said, everybody's busy, got other things to do. So it is our responsibility, right? Yeah. You are saying, look, <laughs> I'm holding you responsible to make yeah. sure that if they're going to tune in, even if it's for whatever time, there yeah. is something of value. And that's respect. Yeah. That's the level I get that, that everything that you're saying is this because you respect them. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I think for me, it's the same thing in the business. If I respect them, then yes, I want to bring something of value. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So the other thing that you tell your clients is that you define success as the ability to identify and then solve problems. Can we talk about that for a minute? And I know we've alluded to some of this, but let's dive a little deeper into that. Sure. Um, I feel that that is my, that's my assignment. Yes. Right? That is, that is really why I'm showing up. And that's, that's the part that takes time, right? So uh, if, if what I'm doing is saying, look, I just want to build this huge roster of clients, <laughs> then what am I giving up to do that? Right. Then I might not be producing the value and how, how, am I really going to be able to focus on, like you said, that, that solution and being able to think through, um, or do I have the capacity or the support to do it? That has to be part of it. I've got to be able to service you fully. Right. Okay. If I can only half service you, cause I got to get out the door to get to the one down the street, you know, that I need to really look for myself. Uh, and what am I doing? Um, again, because, uh, respect because, and also for me, that's the fun. Mm -hmm. Why do I want to take the joy out of it? Right. You, know, you know how you feel when you're like, oh my God, I came up with this. I, I saw that, that I did. Like, right. that's where I get my charge and my energy. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's just really, it's just going from one place to the other, which is everything that we um, wanted to escape in the first place. We made a decision to do this work and in the right. way we're doing it, right, because we wanted this flexibility, this creativity. So why do we cut? ourselves out of that process. Right. And, and I really like the way that you describe that because, you know, I, I mean, I keep going back to this kind of same concept, but by paying attention to what your clients need, by yeah. paying attention to building that relationship, by paying attention to really coming in with a problem solving mind or a solution based, yeah. you know, um, thought process, I think you're going to, you know, you're going to create value that your clients want to always come back for more and more. So I think that's super important. So another thing you tell clients is there are no problems. There is no business. Mm. Why mm. is this the case? Uh, well, you know, it's an exchange, right? Business is an exchange, whether it's problems or needs, however you want to uh, phrase it, it's, it's exchange between one to another. Um, and it's, I think the most exchanges to me are fasting. They're the ones they, they don't, they're not always the, uh, the ones that are the, the most cutting edge technology. Right. right? We know that like, for example, is the, the sewing needle. Right. <laughs> I mean, really the sewing needle. <laughs> right. How long has when that you, been around? Yeah. How long, really? Uh, but when you think about it, when you need to sew something, there's nothing else that will really do the job like a plain old sewing needle. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when I was thinking about this a little bit, I was thinking, you know, no matter, um, you think of a hotel room, right? You can go to a, you know, five-star hotel, you know, six, $700 room night, mm -hmm. or, you know, a, a $50 a night hotel, but you will probably find a little sewing kit with a sewing needle. Yeah. Right? It has nothing to do with what's around it. It is a it solves a problem, right? If somebody needs it, it solves that problem. And so um, I think for me, even within my own business, I have to know what that industry, that historic industry problem is. 
Yes. Okay. So, and, and they're so easy to identify because everybody talks about them, mm -hmm. right? The customer talks about them and then the other vendors, oh yeah, we know blank, blank exists. Right. But we spend so, I was thinking of the analogy, uh, and I talk a lot in analogies, sorry. Yes. <laughs> but I think, right, the analogy of the elephant in the living room. Right. Hey. Right? Okay. So we know within almost every industry, if it's a restaurant, sometimes it's the kitchen, the way the kitchen is configured or a certain piece of equipment or whatever, there's an elephant in the living room. Yeah. Most vendors will come in. They will not acknowledge the elephant because it's historic and it just sort of goes with that. Everybody right? knows it's there. Everybody <laughs> knows it's there, but you know, it's the elephant. Sometimes we try to dress up the elephant. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We can make a prettier elephant, but it's still the same elephant. But if I come in and say right off the bat, I know there's an elephant in our living room. Now, I, I may not be able to make the whole elephant disappear, but I want you to know that I know that it's here. Yeah. And this is what I can do. I can show you and work with you on how we can, you know, maybe do something about this elephant's nose, the trunk. Right. That's it. Right. But at least there's a, an immediate... Um, trust there's honesty and trust they identify they know that i know the industry and yeah. if i have thought not about solving the whole thing but one little piece of it mm -hmm. then again that's not only a value but that allows me that that allows me to build this relationship where i can start talking about other things that might also get in the way Right. right. So I, I um, spent a lot of time before I went into the recycle business uh, with the example that I just mentioned about the cardboard, the paper, the, the shredding. I talked to um, secure document shredders, you know, with the big fancy trucks, you know, and the big guys. And there's only a few of them almost in every community. I know who they are. Right. And they all told me, this is what we do. We do secure document shredding. We don't pick up any of the other stuff. You don't yeah, just right. don't do that. Nobody does that. No, that's a really good clue. Right? <laughs> when they say, that's not the way it's done. <laughs> that's, oh my God. Write that one down. I I that. But that's not the way we do things. Around. That's not the way it's done. I just started a log, not of all the things that worked, but of all those, nobody does that. You can't make money doing it that way. All those sort of isms mm -hmm. right yeah. then i went to the recycle people that collected the plastic and the aluminum and the glass what are those other pieces and i said what about document trade oh god no we don't do that you can't do both you can't <laughs> do both right <laughs> right so by making that list literally and then sitting and saying is that really true that you can't mm -hmm. do both or is it true it's just not being done right and why and is there a niche for me Right, to still make money because obviously they have really good reasons why it's not being done. Right. But now I can literally say in my community, I am the only recycle and shred business. Yeah. I am the only one. Yeah. There was an elephant in the living room. I don't do it, you know, I may not be doing it at the, the level of shred company A. Mm -hmm. Or recycle company B, but you know what? It's enough of a niche that it solves a problem. I'm still, they can have one person do it all. And believe me, this is recycling. This is not brain surgery. Okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And how many of us work as hard as we can to bundle our services just to That's make right. it easier? Because like, you know, as a business owner, entrepreneur, whomever you are, you've got a lot of things on your plate. If I can work with one person who That's can right. solve this elephant. <laughs> That's right. And work That's with right. somebody else who can solve this elephant. I'm happy. <laughs> you are. You are so right. And it's it's just about convenience. Yeah, right? it really is about convenience. Um, and sometimes people will pay a little more for that. Yep. Right. They will pay a little more for uh, just to have one less headache in this area. Right. Right. And one less bill coming in the door. <laughs> one less bill. That's it. That's it. So let's talk for a moment about, and we've alluded a little bit to detecting problems prior yeah. to working with someone, but how exactly do you detect the problems before you make the sales call? Like what's the, what's the process to do that? Well, again, some of it is uh, this historical knowledge that you may have about an industry, 
right? So being able to come in with that information. Uh, for me, where um, the geographic setup is a big deal, like I, I need to know that. I don't have to wait to get there to ask them, right. you know, are you on the third floor or the ground right. floor, right? There we have, because of technology, we have so many ways of really uh, getting some of that information. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people work virtually, so you can do Google Earth kind of things. You can see who else is around. Um, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, when you, if you do walk in, you can see what other vendor is already being used. If mm -hmm. I walk in and see the sticker of vendor A, B, or C, yep. right, and not only do I know about my customer, but I also know about these other folks, right. then I know, oh, they're using B. Yeah. This is what I do that's different from B. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I start talking about. I don't have to, you know, there's nothing else to ask them. I already know who they're using, right? So I immediately, again, start talking about the niche that I fill. Um, instead of sort of hammering them over the head with things that they don't want or that, you know, mm -hmm. that just don't make sense for them. Um, and for one of my customers, two things. One it happened to be a, a, a large national hotel chain. And, and this particular customer said in our state, they said to me, oh, it's not like they were, you know, tree hugging, environmentally loving, but you know what? Corporate headquarters said, you have to recycle. Yeah. Okay. For this particular chain. All right. So they were going to do it. But first thing I heard was, Ah, oh, this is a corporate mandate. Not just for yeah. them. How many others of these are in my community, in my state? Yeah. They gave me a that that statement was a like a gold. Mm -hmm. If I can make it work for them, yes, I've set a precedent. I can roll it out to everybody else because mm -hmm. they all have to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the interesting the problem for them was that. Of course, they are a large hotel. They had a dumpster, right? Mm -hmm. they did their waste management already, okay? And so everybody else that was doing recycle collecting was trying to sell them another dumpster. Because, <laughs> right? Because we that made sense. People, we they, don't need another. Well, they had one for garbage, right? right? So in order to add another one for recycling, what would have to happen was the hotel would literally, you know, the cages that go around the dumpsters to hide them, right? Yeah. Not only would they have to make that wider, but what I observed was they literally would have to change their parking lot, right? Because of where it's sitting, it's against a curb. So they're going to have to tear out a part of the curb to make yeah. this thing larger for another dumpster. Exactly. Everybody else kept coming in. Well, we've got this size dumpster and we have this color dumpster. I'm like, yeah. so I said to them, how about if we don't use a dumpster? <laughs> it was like, wow. That's possible? <laughs> yeah, just keep, let's not even look, let's look over here. Right. Right. So I think that's, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. And, um, and that, I didn't know <laughs> what yeah. else to offer at that time that would help me fill that need, but I just knew in order for it to work for them, what really the, their problem, what the solution was, the container yeah that was it wasn't so everybody's trying to offer them the container so if I can help them find right. another way yeah to use this mandate that was not going to cause like you said all these other problems mm. and eventually we identified something else that was not from within the recycle industry right wow I, I I'm just kind of blown away by that because you know we say this over and over and over again all the time right pay attention, be observant, listen to your clients, you know, understand what the problem is, know what the solutions of the past have been so you can, you know, build a better solution or whatever. And, and these, what you're sharing here are examples, real world examples of that happening, you know, in your community and how that is impacting your business. And I absolutely love that. Um, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of this interview, and I hate that because I don't feel like we've been talking near as long as we need to. Um, but before we let you go, how can people reach out to you if they want to say, pick your brain a little bit more about, you know, finding the solution and selling the solution instead of the problem, or if they want to, you know, access some of your resources yeah. or 
perhaps even work with you? How can they reach out to you? Well, I believe there's the link here for my contact information um, and would love to have this conversation with folks. Also, again, it's just about helping, like, what are those, how can we reframe the question? Because you're right, we hear all this, we know all this, and sometimes it's just like, okay, let's just, how do we look at this in a different way? Um, and it's not about the industry you're in, right? Yeah. It's about, and sometimes, as you've mentioned, it's who else is helping you look at it, maybe from fresh eyes or a different way to find right. a solution that you need. So I hope um, people, they can email, um, certainly on social media, and just to, to share and hear their ideas as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gail. Guys, definitely click on the links below this video and reach out to Gail and take advantage of some of the resources that she is sharing with you today and figure out ways in which you can sell the solution mm -hmm. so that you can up level and upscale your own business. If you're part of the All Access Pass, stick around because we're going to be taking a much deeper dive with Gail into this idea of selling the solution, not the problem, in just a few moments. If you have not yet grabbed that All Access Pass, there's also a link below this video where you can click on that link and snag yours right now. Not only will you get all of the live versions of these videos that you are watching right now, but you're also going to get every single one of those deeper dives I'm doing with every one of our speakers, and you do not want to miss that one. Gail, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. And guys, we will see you in the All Access Pass. Bye, everyone. Bye.